Hello everyone, I am Dr. Ramesh. In this lecture, I am going to discuss about light emitting diode. Why you have to learn about LED? What is the contribution of LED invention for this society? Is LED is important to the society? Then my answer is obviously yes, most important. Nowadays, light emitting diode is one of most energy efficient and rapidly developing lighting technologies. The first visible spectrum LED was invented by Nick Holnoy. Since then, the technology has rapidly advanced and costs have dropped tremendously, making LEDs a viable lighting solution. Hence, in this video, we are going to discuss about the principle, construction, working and the behavior of voltage current characteristics and we are also going to discuss about suitable materials to construct different LEDs. The light emitting diode is a two lead semiconductor light source which uses semiconductor and electroluminescence to create light. Coming to the history, Nick Hall Knight is the first person who invented visible red LED by using gallium arsenic phosphide material. At that time, the production cost of one LED is around $200. After Nick Hall Knight, around 30 years, researchers have tried to manufacture LED with different materials to increase the efficiency. But they are not succeeded in the manufacture of white LED till 1990. In 1993, Shoji Nakamura developed a bright blue LED. For this, he earned Nobel Prize along with Isamu Akasaki, Hiroshi Emano. Blue LED wins physics Nobel. Why blue part particular? Because blue was the last and most difficult invention. And it is most crucial to create white light. The light emitting diode is nothing but like a ordinary PN junction diode and it is operated when it is connected in forward wire situation. This is the PN junction diode and it is connected with the anode as well as cathode. And this is a positive terminal and it is negative terminal and it is covered by plastic epoxy layer hemispherical shell to protect the LED by external shock. Here the light sources comparison different light source comparison with the LED. When you compare with the LED with other available light sources it is far better compared to the other sources in terms of lumens per watt as well as lifetime. Coming to the diode symbol point of view, this is the LED symbol and this is the diode symbol. So the difference between the LED symbol and diode symbol is the light is emitting out, the arrow mark is outside. But whereas in case of diode symbol, there is no such type of arrow. Although I have already said, LED is same as ordinary P injection diode, but it is also true that ordinary P injection diode doesn't emit light when it is for bias. Now, we'll try to explain what is the speciality of LED so that it can emit light others can't. LED 
how it works. The LED is a light source which uses semiconductors and electroluminescence to create light. Electroluminescence is the result of radiative recombination of electrons and holes in a material, usually a semiconductor. The excited electrons release their energy as photons in the form of light. Prior to recombination, electron and holes may be separated either by doping the material to form like a PN junction. Forward vast PN junction. This is a P side, that means that holes are the majority charge carriers. This is the N side, electrons are the majority charge carriers. P is connected to the positive terminal and N is connected to the negative terminal in case of forward bias. When, because of the positive terminal connected to the P side, then holes moves towards the N side. Similarly, electron N side is connected towards the negative terminal because of that electrons move towards the P side. While moving holes to, towards the P sides, holes move towards the N side, it can combine with the electrons. Similarly, electron can able to combine with the holes. Generally, electron, this is a conduction energy band diagram of P injection diode. This is the conduction band of P side and it is the valency band of P side. This is a conduction band of N side and valency band of N side. So, it is clear from the diagram that the conduction band of N side electron has more energy when we compare with the valency band of P side. Once the electron of N side combined with the hole of P side, the difference amount of energy is released in the form of photons. As as the number of recombinations in between the electrons and holes are increases, then simultaneously the number of photons released in the process is also increases. The light intensity may increase. During recombination, the energy difference is given up either in the form of heat or in the form of light. In case of silicon and germanium junctions, a greater percentage of this energy, that is recombination energy, is given up in the form of heat, while little amount in the form of light, which is in situ. In semiconductors like gallium arsenic, gallium phosphate, gallium arsenic phosphate, gallium nitrate, Most of the energy is given in the form of light. The major difference between the silicon and the germanium and other type of materials are these two are related to the indirect band gap semiconductor. Here the gallium arsenic are these compound semiconductors are under the category of direct band gap semiconductors. The emitted light wavelength depends upon the type of material used in the construction because the energy gap eg equivalence to h nu the emitted photon energy eg equivalence to h nu but nu is nothing but c by lambda then eg equivalence to hc by lambda then the wavelength of the output light is equivalence to hc by eg eg is changes with material selection then obviously the emitted light wavelength is depends upon the type of material but not on the applied voltage some of the materials used in leds are aluminium gallium arsenide is used to construct the led and it can emit infrared radiation gallium arsenic phosphide can able to produce a red orange, yellow outputs. Aluminium gallium phosphide, it can produce green light. Indium gallium nitride, 
it can able to produce blue blue green and near ultraviolet spectrum zinc selenide can able to produce blue output this is the physical structure of led this is a n type material and it is a p type material p is very thin when we compare with the n these arrowed place is nothing but these are the metal electrode this is a positive electrode and this is the negative electrodes so this junction is near to the top surface so that we can eliminate the reabsorbed photons within the structure the p type layer is made very thin and is grown on the n type substrate metal electrodes are attached on either of side of the pn junction diode so as nodes for external electrical connection and it is encased in a dome shaped transparent hard plastic epoxy hemispherical case so that light is emitted uniformly in all the directions coming to the white light led till now we are discussing about the blue red green leds but how we can produce white light it is possible by using two methods one is mixing of three primary colors like red green blue to produce white light this method has high quantum efficiency the other method is coating an led of one color with phosphor of a different color in order to produce white light this method is commercially popular to manufacture led bulbs and lightings coming to the the current voltage characteristics of led in this we have to discuss only in forward bias situation because led works in forward bias situation because it is like similar to the pn junction diode pn junction diode is act like a on switch for the forward bias and it is off switch for the reverse bias that's what we are selecting the forward bias situation the voltage and current characteristics for positive voltages the current rises very steeply when it reaches to a certain voltage that voltage is called as threshold voltage and the voltage varying the input voltage is varying with the color of the led and it also varying somewhat from led to led of the same type the required voltage is maximum for blue light and it is minimum for the red light in case of visible spectrum coming to the advantages point of view and it is very cheap and it came able to use low voltages and durable and shock proof the response time is very less that is it takes only 10 nanoseconds to respond and the lumens per watt watt is 28 to 150 it is almost 10 times higher when we compare with the incandescent light and available in in between 0.01 watt onwards and lamp life is 25000 hours or more leds long life rich color and easily controlled features with integrated electrons electronics offer a scalable lighting solution thank you for watching this video if you like this video please share and also comment thank you